Hello YouTube and welcome to another unboxing and review of the Perfect Prime IR0019 thermal imaging camera. Initially you will get the camera shipped in this plastic packaging with some accessories and the camera inside a case. First off we have the actual operations menu of the thermal imaging camera. It is well structured, gives you a lot of details on the functionalities, has some good pictures, overall very good handbook. Then there's this QR code that you can scan for some more information online. It comes with a standard USB cable so you can charge the integrated battery. There is a shoulder strap so you can carry the case. And finally there is a standard USB charger. In my case this was for the US power but any USB charger will work. Now let's get started and unpack the actual camera. The camera itself is shrink wrapped in a plastic foil inside the case. Now let's get rid of the plastic foil and look at the camera. One of the main features is the big screen of course. We have a power button, three options button and four arrow keys. And on the front you have a trigger button. And there's this lens cap that you can fold up and down to protect the lenses again. The rechargeable battery is inside the handle which you can open. However, it is a standard 18650 lithium ion battery that has a wire soldered to it and is connected to the camera. Let's go ahead and turn on the camera with a long push of the power button. It will take a while for the Perfect Prime thermal imaging camera to boot up. As soon as the boot up process is completed, we are in the camera. When you press menu, you open a small menu that offers a few options. One of the first options is called image registration. The images that you have stored, color palette, emissivity. Inside the settings, we have an auto shutdown. We can adjust the intensity, the brightness of the screen. Now in order to activate this, you have to push select and the arrow keys up, down, left and right are for navigating the menu. You can change the language, English, Chinese, Italian and German. You can change the temperature units from degrees Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit. You can change the time format from 12 to 24 hours. You can select the actual date and time. And you can select whether you want the spot measurement to be turned on or turned off. And finally, you can look at the software version that is installed. The emissivity is an option that lets you select whether you're measuring a reflective surface or a non-reflective surface. Next up is the color palette. We have black, we have white, cool, iron, and spectra. Under images, you will find the images that you have stored on the internal memory. Now, when you press the trigger button, it will capture a photo. If you want to save the photo, you have to select menu, which is underneath yes, or select for no. You have to hold the power button for a while to turn off the camera and after five seconds, it shuts off. The camera has a temperature range of minus 20 degrees Celsius to 300 degrees Celsius and minus four degrees Fahrenheit to 572 degrees Fahrenheit. It captures an image resolution of 320 by 240 pixels for the thermal images. Now here's a real world example I'd like to show you. I have placed two cups of water on the table, one with hot water and one with cold water. 
On the screen, you will have three different measurements. You will have the measurement of the temperature at the center of your spot. You will have the highest temperature inside the image frame and the lowest temperature inside the image frame. The top left degrees reading is also the same as the spot. Now, when we go ahead and change the color palette from spectra to iron, we can see that this has now changed the way the colors look. In my opinion, iron always has the most representative way of demonstrating thermal information. Cool is another option for the colors. So let's take a photo and store this photo. And now when you go into the menu, you can uh, see that these are the photos you've taken and you can pull it up. And then even look at it on the camera. In order to transfer the images from the camera to your computer, you have to plug in the USB cable and it will show up as an external drive on your computer. We also have the color palette option white, which means white is hot, black is cold. And you can change to black, which means black is hot and white is cold. My personal preference remains with iron and let's change to semi-glass emissivity because we're measuring glass as an object. So here you can see the image that I've taken with the camera. I've loaded it onto the computer. In this case, I rotated the camera 90 degrees to the left so you can see the objects larger and get a better impression of the resolution. This means, however, that the text and the readings on the screen or on the image are rotated as well. As you can see here, the hottest object inside the image frame was 52.6 degrees Celsius on the right and the coldest was 11.9 degrees Celsius on the left. Whereas it seems like that the background of the image, which is the table, was at 21.9 degrees Celsius. The image refresh rate of this camera is average, not the best, but it works. This camera features another functionality, which lets you overlay a real image, an RGB image over the thermal image. And it lets you go through different steps, such as full thermal, which is 0% RGB, 25% RGB, 50%, 75%, and of course, 100% RGB. So no thermal imaging information on the image. Now, the up and down button will allow you to adjust the RGB camera overlay with the thermal imaging camera. Now on the left, you see what this image would look like in 100% thermal. On the full right, you see how it would like in real with an RGB camera. And the center left is how it would look uncorrected, meaning there's a shift. And the corrected one has a corrected overlay on top of the thermal imaging. Last, I'd like to show you some more examples. In this case, you see the full color palette again with spectra, iron, cool, white, and black. This is one of the typical use cases you would use the thermal imaging camera is to investigate insulation qualities such as the front door of the house. In this case, we see there's a lot of cool air passing through the gaps on the bottom right and top left of the door. In this example, you can see we have an infrared heater mounted on the wall above the couch and it's heating up to 101.2 degrees Celsius. Here's a short summary of this camera. Overall, it has a solid feature set. The image quality is quite competitive. The design of the camera in terms of ergonomics is great. Overall set, this is an excellent thermal imaging camera for various applications that are on a budget. Compared to more expensive competitors, this camera obviously is targeting a budget market, but still provides sufficient features and a great image quality for the price. Thanks for watching. Please feel free to comment below and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you next time.